and welcome to the Huntsman World Senior Games Active Life. This is Andy Groft sitting in for our regular host and game CEO, Kyle Case. He's out of town. Joining me in the studio today is the game's director of operations and my friend, Jeff Harding. How are you, Jeff? Hey, Andy. I'm fine. How are you? Really good. And I'm better that you're in the studio with me. Um, you know, our goal with this show is to help you get the most out of your life. You know, lots of research backs up the claim that staying active and participating in competitive sporting events is good for our bodies and for our minds. And so this sh- on this show, we talk to healthcare professionals, to Olympians, um, professional athletes sometimes, and uh, maybe most importantly, regular people like you and me who have decided to stay active and competitive. And, uh, you know, because they've stayed uh, active and competitive, they, they never fail to entertain us with their stories. That, that's true, Andy. And you know what? I, I would, compared to me, they are professionals. I yeah. mean, they, they are so far above where I am that they are the professionals. Well, I think you're being a little bit, um, um, what's, what's that word? Condes- uh, self-depreciating? Yeah, because you're, you're a pretty good athlete. You run a lot. You walk a lot. Um, in fact, uh, if I remember right, not this last year, but the year before, you ran the 5K at I the did. Huntsman World Senior Games. And not only did you finish, which I think is a great thing, but you um, qualified for nationals. Which shows that they have a very low standard <laughs> for, for qualifying for nationals. But yes, I did. It was, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. You know, it, it reminds me, um, so at least with the Huntsman World Senior Games, you have registered for competitive athletics before right and and i don't know if you've experienced the same thing i'd like you to tell me if you have but i have too i'm not a hardcore athlete but i've done a couple triathlons some half marathons a few shorter races like 10ks and 5ks and and even some you know team sports and and often when a friend is trying to talk me into registering for this or that you know 5k or this or that you know whatever basketball tournament um often i find myself just thinking oh I don't know if I want to. You know, this is going to be hard. Is that have you had that same experience, or do you kind of just think, no, it's going to be a blast? Well, I, I, it kind of goes both ways. It depends on what it is. I mean, basketball. You know, get me to play on your basketball team. I'm probably yeah, right. That's there. more exciting. And and then when I'm out there doing it, I'm thinking, why the hell did I? Do, why the heck did I do this? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Why the heck did I do this? And uh, but you know, like. With 5Ks, my family and I, we do a lot of 5Ks together, and, and some come up, hey, we, let's do this 5K. Okay, great, let's do it, because yeah. we're doing it as a family, so it's And a you lot do of it fun. recreationally, and sure, it's a lot of fun. Sure, not trying to compete, just, just going out and running. I, I think that's a great attitude. I do think that sometimes people get too stressed about it, and they should just do it. One, one story that came to my mind as I was you know, getting ready for this show was one time I was com- uh, planning on being in the, the Utah Summer Games, not the Huntsman World Senior Games. I'm not quite enough old for that yet, but... Um, uh, the the the, the Utah Cedar City the Utah Summer Games in Cedar City that right. happens in the in the summertime um, in June usually I think anyway I decided to do the triathlon and my friend at the gym said oh Andy don't do the sprint do the Olympic triathlon you know <laughs> do the one that's a little bit longer <laughs> challenge yourself <laughs> yeah challenge yourself so um, my uh, my partner and I were compete or were training for this and one day we were we were on a ride and we, there was this downhill and instead of coasting I decided to just really pump the bike and really get it going and I and I you know passed her and then I got to a stop sign I thought I should wait so I sat and waited and panted and when she finally caught up with me I realized that we still had 15 more miles on this you know this train <laughs> run I was so tired and I and I said something to her I said why are we doing this? This is just too hard. I, I don't even want to do this anymore. This isn't fun. I thought this was supposed to be fun. That's what I said. Mm-hmm. And she said something to me that I'll always remember, Jeff. She said, um, Andy, nobody has fun in these races. They don't have fun while they're racing or while they're training. It hurts. It's, it's, it's painful. What, what's fun is the finish line. <laughs> what's fun is the energy that's true and the and the camaraderie that comes with mm-hmm. hey we all just finished something we here. have something in common here we all crossed this finish line we yeah. all endured this together yeah and i think a lot of people feel that way when they come to the huntsman world senior games maybe at first they're like oh i don't know if i want to do it but then they do it and they really enjoy the energy that comes with it i think you're right and that you know that brings us to um our guest today Today uh, in studio, we have someone who um, who decided a long time ago not to just quit. She decided not to um, just sit on the couch, and she decided to stay active, and uh, that's Cleo Wardle. Cleo, thank you for being here with us. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here. Hey, Cleo. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> you know... Uh, 
Cleo, um, in some biographical information that I had for her, um, it, I just have to read this, Jeff. It's just too, it's too good. And, and Cleo's looking at me like, oh, no, what, what's he going to read? But, but it says, start with hard work and then throw in compassion and grit, add love, add knowledge, add skill, and then just before you mix it all together, throw in a large quantity of laughter, zaniness, craziness, and unpredictability. Finally, add all the energy you can find, mix it well, and you'll have Cleo Wardle. That sounds just like her. (laughs) It does, doesn't it? It does, yes. Cleo, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Have, have you, you know, have you always been active, even when you were young? And kind of, how did you get here to to, to St. George? And yeah, just tell us a little bit about. Well, I was born in St. George, but I didn't know about the senior games till the second year they had it, and I bowled a lot. So I thought, oh, I can do that, and so I entered the bowling. Then I knew after that that I could. Do pitch horseshoes. So I started pitching horseshoes. Well, after I got into that, then they asked me if I'd be the assistant to the horseshoe director, and I've done that for over 20 years and enjoyed every minute of it. Over 20 years. Over 20 years. Gosh, that but must make you about 22 now. I was raised in a neighborhood of boys, so I high jumped. I played baseball. I played hide and seek. I played rubber gums. I played everything you with played, these kids. What was that last one you played? What? Rubber guns. Oh, oh rubber rub- guns. I yeah. thought you said oh, okay. gums like chew. <laughs> yeah, no rubber guns. That hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you've been active pretty much your whole yes. life. Now, did you ever find yourself in a in a situation where you sl- you slowed down and you had to talk yourself into getting active again, or has it just always come natural? Well, because I'm getting old, it's hard for me to do the horseshoe pitching anymore. But boy, I'm active in doing everything else that's included in that horseshoe pitching. Do you mind sharing your age with the listeners? I'm going to be 85 in October. She's going to be 85, but folks, she doesn't look it, and and then you know she's she is just a bundle of energy. So, tell us, what's your favorite thing about competing? in the Huntsman World Senior Games, in, in either bowling or horseshoe pitching or both? Well, I think it's the people that you meet that come from all over the world that come here. The first year I entered, I just had a great time when we used to get together at the out at the college and have dinner together. And I and I went around and talked to everybody, and you know I rub everybody's back. So You're so you, shy. You're very yeah, shy. I'm You're really introverted. shy. So I rub everybody's back, find out where they're from, what they're doing, if they're having fun. Because I love my town, and I love all these people that come here. So just just being together with, with other yeah, people is really... Just the, and you know, when they come... Or they don't come. That's when you miss people. When they've come for years and years and years and years, and then all of a sudden they don't come, and you wonder what happened to those people. Did they get? Di- did they die, or did they just give up? And that's and that is a good question. And and that's what this show is all about. Did they die, or did they give up? I mean, what's the reason that the people aren't active? So we want we don't want you to die, and we don't want you to give up. We, we want, want you to, to be at going. the games. Well, uh, I'm going to be there. Andy, did you know that there is an upper age limit for the Huntsman World Senior Games? No, I didn't know that. What it's is it? It's death. Okay. <laughs> We'll take you up till death, but uh, you know after that we we haven't found a way to take you yet. Because we, we have had some We've had some, some centuries some we, centuries some plus, centuries, right? Yeah, that's yes. true. Yeah, I think the oldest one I saw was a hundred and three hundred and four. Doctor Clark, he he waddled the fifty yard dash uh, in the track and field. In track and field, oh, yeah, that's awesome. Well, when you get to that point, you're the only one competing anyway, you're so you're gonna medal. you're yeah. you're, yeah, you you're gonna well get, a get a medal. Gold, so you might as well come and get the medal and have the good time while you can. That's right. So, Cleo, for for those who are just joining us, this is the Huntsman World Senior Games Active Life, and we're talking with Cleo Wardle, a uh, longtime participant and and a director, our assistant director for horseshoe pitching in the Huntsman World Senior Games. So, tell us what's it like to be an assistant director. What's it like to be an administration in the games? Well, that's kind of fun too because you get to know all of the you get to know everybody who runs the the games. You get to know a lot of different people when they have these kickoff dinners and everything. You get to know a lot of different people, and that helps you do your job a little bit better too. 
just just the associate and you are a social person so you do enjoy getting to to meet folks oh yes and and you know one thing that that brings up to me i think some of the people listening know some may not that we have 28 sports so you consider we have 28 sports um some of them very you know very high impact like maybe basketball or or a triathlon some a little bit less like bridge or cowboy action shooting well it depends on what side of the target you're on if you're on the the dancing side that's kind of high impact but um but so each of those sports has somewhere between two or three directors slash assistant directors, and maybe with the bigger sports like softball or volleyball, as many as five or five or well, six. I think the softball even has like twenty five people that are involved in in running the event. Okay, yeah. yeah. So so when you say that you you know as a director, you know you, you mentioned as an athlete you love that and you really enjoy the camaraderie and the competition, but as a director you've also um, really enjoy just meeting a lot of people who are directing these different uh, sports. Well, I do, and I uh, one of my best friends is Doug Bergen, who and Bill Given, who help with the softball. And so, uh, I tell people if they haven't seen something they want to really see, it's to go see the softball games. I'm not kidding you. The first year I went to that, I thought I would just die laughing <laughs> because you see these old guys out there with braces on their legs. You see them hit the ball clear of the farthest they can hit it in the thing, get to second base. And, <laughs> and, and that's with oxygen halfway between first and second. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, you know, just to remind everybody, we do have those teams that have 75, 80 year olds, even, even some maybe 85 to 90s, but we also have some teams that are 50 to 55. And those guys, I've watched some of their games and I wonder if I could get to first as fast as they could. There are yeah. some, some great athletes. There, there really are. I mean, we, we, we joke about the, the, the extreme, the, the, the older folks that aren't at the prime, but we have a lot of athletes who are. In great shape. And you know, those guys that are young love it just as much as the old you guys do. do. Yeah. And they can hardly wait till they get to be 50. I have a nephew <laughs> that wait, could hardly wait to be 50 so he could be in the track and field. Yeah. Well, great. It's a lot of fun. Now, um, Cleo, one of the things that I just like to ask people in general that are associated with the games, and, and whenever I get a chance to be on the radio, I like to ask it too. I'll ask you. Do you think that competitive athletics works as a sort of fountain of youth? In other words, do you feel like you feel and maybe act younger um, than than you would have if you wouldn't have been uh, as active? Probably, but I'm not going to get old. You, you you won't. You're too spry. Yeah, I will. Your body lets you know you're old, but your mind is still young, so you can... You can still be young in your heart, whether you are in your body or not, but you do you do as much as you can do. Well, yeah. that's true. Have you been able to stay injury-free free throughout your life? Have you been free from injury? Have there been times when you've been injured and, and had to slow down? Well, actually, no. I've had a few operations you, and had stuff, few. and I've been hit by horseshoes in the head and on my leg and stuff, but it hasn't slowed me down any. <laughs> So, I mean, I, I think to myself, how did that happen? Because we try to do it, you know, we try to have safe games, but were, you were probably just so busy talking to people. And Well, I was over the fence, and the horseshoe hit the top of the stake. It came over the fence and hit me oh, in the wow. leg. So it was really a fluke. And then another time, I had a whole bunch of single adults out there trying to teach them how to pitch horseshoes. And I said, remember, you've got a lethal weapon in your hand, and you've got to be careful. But he was pitching that horseshoe and hit me on the side of the my head missed my eye by an inch oh, God. missed my temple by an inch my glasses fell off they didn't break so i felt like i was still here i was here for a purpose <laughs> well that's right so what do you tell people who are dealing with pain how do you what, what would you say to them to to motivate them to get up and 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 go through the pain, work through the pain, and and stay active. Just take another Tylenol. <laughs> <laughs> and call me in the morning. <laughs> well, if you sit on the couch and do nothing, what are you doing with your life? You've got yeah. to get out and do something fun with your life. I think that's true. I think I think there are several people who think, oh, I don't want to go do something. I might get injured. When really they'll probably feel less pain if they stay active. True. And you're going to f- get injured anyway. You might as well have have fun doing it. Before we go any farther, I want to I, I want Cleo to talk about the different activities besides bowling. I know you've been involved with dancing. I know you were a hairdresser, so on your feet. What are some of the things that you've done throughout your life that? that I mean, you talked about some of the sports. What are some of the other things you've done? Well, I've traveled all over the world. I've been from Ireland to China, and you know, I give make dishcloths and give them away. I've given them away from Ireland to China, and I've been to 
all the states except four. I, I, I used one of my dishcloths to wipe up some mustard just, good, just last night. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, keep telling I us. told you you had to use it at well, least I do. once. I do. <laughs> Other things that you've done in your Other life? things that I've done in my life. I've danced, and I have my, because my daughter had super tippers, I went as a chaperone to the girls and been to Japan six times, twice, twice with horseshoe pictures. Wow. And, and and you danced too cuz And we danced too. You, you were actually, yeah, we danced on the snow over in the at the Nagano Olympics in Japan. We wow. danced on the snow. On wow. snow, wow. Now, if you're just joining us, uh, we're here with the Huntsman World Senior Games Active Life Radio program and um, our guest today is Cleo Wardle. And Cleo, uh, I wanted to ask you um, I think a lot of us uh, have a hard time with motivation. I do. And um Wonder what what do you what do you do to stay motivated? I mean, on those mornings when you get up and you just think, oh, I don't want to go out to the, you know, to the Worthen Park, or I don't want to go out and do this. How, how do you stay motivated? Well, guess what I do? I get up every morning. We go down to the neighbor's pool and I exercise in the pool for an hour every day for five days a week. That's impressive. And you know, if you don't keep your body moving and you don't keep your mind active, I love doing crossword puzzles. I love playing games on my computer. Uh, my eyes are getting bad, so I can't read very good anymore. But I don't just sit around and somebody says, "Are you? do you ever get bored? And I said, no, I like my own company. I, if I don't like what I'm doing, I get up and go do something go do different. Something else. Well, and it, and it sounds like... A routine has helped you. You right. get up in the morning and get right. to the pool, and then and then it's then you're up, you're up then and you're, you're up. going, and it's easier to, to go out to the park or to go to the bowling lane. Invigorated, oh, yeah. ready for the day. Ready for the day. And you've had your body moving, so it's ready for the day too. Yeah. Now earlier in the in the show, you admitted that you're 65. <laughs> I'm going to be 85. In oh October. my gosh! Okay, you don't look it. But so you admitted that you're you're almost 85. Right. What um. What changes have you seen in 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 fitness in sports? Uh, you know, from the time you were a little girl to now, what's the difference? Well, I think everybody cares more about how their health is today than they used to be. Of course, we all used to just work hard. We were talking about that at the pool this morning. How we all just worked. Nobody had fun. But I said we used to work all day and then go home and just rest. They. Today, you work, and then you think about, what am I going to do for fun? Right. So, we work hard. Uh, this is one of my things when I was working. I work hard so I can play hard. Amen. <laughs> yes. And, and you do play hard. And I do play you hard. You do play hard. I'm, I'll, I do I'll play be the first hard. to admit, Cleo plays hard. You know, while Jeff is getting ready to ask you this question, um, I just want to say, some of you out there listening <laughs> may have heard or even seen it, but the AT&T U-verse... Um, some of you know that network, AT and T Uverse. They actually did a 24-minute documentary on the Huntsman World Senior Games this last year, and they highlighted four sports. Uh, help me, Jeff. It was softball, um, pickleball, pickleball, horseshoes, and basketball. That's basketball. right. Basketball. Those four, and and so of course one of them was horseshoes. And someone who really stood out in that um, nationally televised, I, one of the stars well, I was for the, sure. I, I felt like I was, <laughs> she the, was star. the star. <laughs> she was definitely highlighted. And they, I mean, but she's just so cute and fun and bubbly. How could they not put the camera on her? <laughs> yeah, it, it was really fun. In fact, if you get a chance, if anyone's listening to this and wants to see it, if you just go to um, YouTube. And then just type in Huntsman World Senior Games AT and T. So Huntsman World Senior Games AT and T in you or in uh, in the the search engine there for uh, YouTube, you it'll come up and you can watch the twenty three minute documentary commercial free and you can see Cleo in the show and yeah, it's you really won't see good. Andy or I, but you will see Cleo. <laughs> That's right. No, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Kyle's in it. Kyle's well, in well, it. Kyle's definitely. Yeah, the I think we were. I think we were cleaning bathrooms or, or something that moving day. boxes or something, something, something like that, that day. Yeah. By the way, you're listening to the Huntsman World. Senior Games Active Life. We're speaking with Cleo Wardle. And Cleo, I want to, is there a favorite memory or a favorite part of the games that just jumps out, something you look forward to every year, or just something that happened once that, that's just one of your favorite stories? Well, I've got a lot of favorite stories, but I can't think of anything that jumps out except one of the years when we just did. We did, we did age groups. 
this one lady came. I mean, she was a great horseshoe pitcher, and I wasn't very good at that time. And she says, I came here to pitch horseshoes. I didn't come here just to pitch with these ladies that are my age. <laughs> so we changed that so that you, you pitch in the percentage that, that the men are in. So you're, you're, you're pitching so against the somebody you're pitching your skill level. In, in your skill level, which has helped a lot. Now, I, I remember a couple of years ago, there was a fellow that showed up that was in a wheelchair. Yeah. Tell us that story. Well, he just had to go out there and pitch his he, horseshoes. He, he his had never wheelchair. really pitched horseshoes before. He never did. really pitched horseshoes, but we had a great time with him. Uh, Helped yeah. him every way we could. We've had a lot of people come that have just never pitched a horseshoe. But by the time they got through, you bet I let them know everything they needed to know about pitching horseshoes. You are a good teacher. I am you a really good are. I, Thank you. In, in fact, uh, well, you know, just uh, one of the things we do at the games is is we, as a staff, go out to some of the different venues so that we can rem- you know know what it's like, learn some of the rules. And just uh, about a month month ago, ago or maybe yeah, it's been about two a month, months, or maybe six weeks. Um, uh, like we that. went out and uh, and Cleo taught us uh, about horseshoes and taught us the rules, and um, she was a lot of fun out there too. Um, so so we're getting close to time being up, but I want you to tell us just a little bit about. Um, the Huntsman World Senior Games. So there's there's people listening right now that are in their 30s and their 40s, maybe some in their 20s, but there are several people in their 50s and 60s that are listening. Is it worth it? Is it, oh, yes, is, it, it is. is it too exclusive or, no. or is it open? Tell us more no, about it. No, you know what? When I see people, and I've taken a lot of brochures around over the years that I've been involved in the senior games, I've taken them to horseshoes, I've taken them to bowling, and I said, you know, if people haven't, you haven't got... Something you can do. Think of something you can do and go learn how to do it. Come and join the senior games. There are so many things that are easy that are not hard that that you can come and enjoy. And and there's skill levels, too, even within sports. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we always need lots of volunteers, and they can come and volunteer to help us do a lot of stuff. And we need those too. You know and that that they re- love it. Our volunteers that come and help with horseshoes say, "Oh, this is so fun! I didn't know how much fun it was." That's so, true. so, so you're. I mean, I just want to kind of recap this thought. If you're a great horseshoer or thrower, how do we say it? Horseshoe, horseshoe pitcher. Horseshoe pitcher. If you're a great horseshoe pitcher, pitcher um, you can have some really great competition. If you're brand new you can still have a great time. You, I right? think that brand new guys have more fun than the old guys that know how, think they're going to be better than they are. <laughs> right. And then if you're a little nervous about, if you're a little bit nervous about um, being in, the, in any of the competitions, whether it's horseshoes or road races or cycling or swimming or whatever, you can also come as a volunteer. And ha- Jeff, you're over the volunteers. I think people would be surprised to hear how many volunteers we have. We have over 2,500 volunteers and some have been here some have been volunteering for every year that the game's been in. So we have some volunteers that have volunteered for 27, 28 years. That's amazing. That's how much they great? love volunteering and participating in that, in that way with the games. And, you know, that leads me to my next question for you, Cleo. Maybe, maybe one of the last ones that we have is, um, is uh, we have like a 79% return rate. So people who come to the games, you know, 8 out of 10 of them come back the next year and the year after and the year after. Why would you say, what is the one or what's the one top or the two top reasons why people come back? I think because we make it fun for them. I really think that every sport that we have makes it fun for everybody that comes. And they welcome them all back. We take care of them. We do everything we can to make them have a good time. That's right. Jeff, you have one more? No. Okay. Well, you know what, Cleo? It has been a pleasure. I'm really glad that you were able to come out and talk She's with us today. She's such a sweetheart. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> you're a lot of fun <laughs> and you're inspiring, I think. And hopefully some people will be able to um, check out the, uh, the YouTube video that I talked about. Um, that's going to be it for this edition of the Huntsman World Senior Games Active Life radio show. Tune in next Thursday at 4.30 for another fun and inspiring half hour of learning how you can make the most out of your life. Um, You can also listen from anywhere in the world or listen to past shows by going to www.seniorgames.net. You know, there are only two months left to register. So if you're 50 or over, go to our website, choose one of our 28 sports, and uh, get registered.